and I wanted to get your perspective on the recent rise we've seen in silver. I know last time we had you on, we were definitely below the levels we are right now. So it's it's been quite a, a good rally we've had here in the last days and weeks. Um, I know you had said that by the end of the year, it's very possible that something could break in the physical markets where we might have people not being able to get physical metal. Your perspective on where we stand right now. Well, I hope I didn't say very probable, but it is always probable that there could be some mismatch. And uh, just to further that idea, this uh, first state depository that is responsible for hold, holding precious metals for many gold and silver IRA accounts has gone into receivership. So that would kind of say, oh, well, David's somewhat right. Now, did that really disrupt the market? Well, no, it didn't really disrupt the entire silver market, but all those people that had precious metals IRAs, it certainly disrupted them to a great extent. So that's kind of what I was more or less trying to imply, but on a bigger scale, you're still correct. It could be something large enough that it affects the market at large, but you know, that's a black swan. I think it's more important to focus on the overall trend than, you know, a particular black swan, but nonetheless, you have to bear that in mind. In other words, what you've said, what I've said, what your brothers have said, you know, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And that's really the, the smartest place to be, even in an IRA. And I just want to jump on that a little bit more. I mean, when people ask if they want, you know, they ask, David, what's your opinion on having gold and silver in an IRA versus outside of an IRA? I always have the same answer. It's best to have it outside of an IRA. But for many people, their only savings or the bulk of their savings is in an IRA. So on that, or, or some type of vested, you know, government approved savings program, a SEP IRA, Roth IRA, you know, whatever. So in those cases, I say, absolutely, it's better to have it, you know, or some of it anyway, in precious metals than not at all. But as far as safety is concerned, you know, you want something that's that precious outside of any government intervention, if at all possible. And can you expand on the importance of that? I think that's really key. And then also with respect to storage facilities, I know all the storage facilities that Miles Franklin partners with are always going to be segregated, audited, and allocated, uh, which not all storage facilities are. Sometimes they're pooled and stuff like that. So can you explain the importance of kind of all of that? Sure. The, I've had about three consultations for people that had metal through an IRA in the state first state depository and two of them were in segregated accounts so if you read the uh, the contract what it says about segregated in theory and i want to emphasize the word theory they should be able to get their metal back because it's been you know segregated the exact coins they put in are the exact coins they get out that's what segregated means now i don't expect that to happen but at least i ask them to make reference to it and send it to both the IRA and also to the First State Depository Receivership website. And at least they have it on the record. Whenever you go into allocated or unallocated, you're playing with fire. Even though allocated, you've allocated this amount of silver over there in this pile it's still a pile of silver. So whatever you put into that pile, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it back out. You'll get silver out of the pile, but not what you put in. In a lot of cases, that wouldn't matter like on an industrial user, but on an investment basis, I would always go for segregated and pay the more expensive amount for storage and be safe than I would on an allocated. Unallocated is just what it says it's just silver flying around there it can be paper it can be physical it could be a mishmash of um, loaned out silver that's due it could be uh, partially <clears throat> options on futures it could be a number of things and it's all legal you know by the letter of the law but it's the worst way to hold a position in silver so or, or gold so i would uh just you know, reiterate what you and I have said so many times. That's the general breakdown. When we're looking at the supply of silver, um, if you look at, for example, the registered inventories, 
it seems like there's been a steady decrease ever since Silver Squeeze, and it's just gotten worse and worse. Um, can you expand for our viewers kind of what we're seeing right now on the Comex and LBMA? Sure. It's you know, said on many channels that there's been a huge drawdown, uh, both the Comex and the LBMA. And again, going back to what I was talking about with this first depository and, and on the previous interview that you know, something could break, Again, what just think about this first state depository. Is that the only one that's doing some shenanigan, we will call it, with the precious metals that is in their vault? And the answer is no. There could be another one or two or five or ten. I don't know. But I do know that there's the high probability of more than this first state depository. So that's the kind of uh, information I was trying to convey on the last interview. It's not necessarily something breaks on the COMEX or the LVMA, which it could. It's more subtle than that. It's more about, let's say, storage facility that's well regarded. First State Depository, well known, has been in business for quite some time and, and highly trusted. That's why these IRA custodians used it because, you know, it, it was fine until it wasn't. So <clears throat> I think there's more of that to come. And as far as the stockpile decreasing, it's going to be interesting. I've seen uh, the COMEX down to the level we're at right now, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I should say out of nowhere, out of somewhere comes a, a very substantial amount of silver to replenish the registered category. But I'm not seeing it this time yet, anyway. And I also looking at the LBMA, I know they have a different uh, attitude with the uh, association that's not quite as restrictive as what the COMEX is, meaning that you're not sure with that bar sitting on a shelf somewhere, how many real potential owners there are in that bar. And so even though the inventory may be there, there could be an overage of claims against it versus what the you know, physical properties are. So I do think that we are getting close. I do think that the investment community that's moved into precious metals will continue to add to their stockpiles, their, their investment. And the fact that Wall Street Silver and others have started to educate many people that were unaware of what happens at the end of the great empires when the inflation experiment comes to an end again and all fiat fails and knowing that it will fail probably within their lifetime at least for those that are you know certain age group so i think i've said enough but it's really important to realize that there are these subtleties going on behind the scenes in fact i talked to somebody that's really pretty grounded and well known in the silver community and they were unaware of this first state depository going under and never said i know it all i don't i'm not a know-it-all i'm a learn it all but that's one i was aware of but um you know it's not front page news uh, at least not uh, right now